Hello, welcome to Paleo Greenberg. Greenberg here, and today is going to be another flint napping video. I'm going to flint nap this beautiful piece of uh, flint ridge. Flint ridge is a flint that, well, to the best of my knowledge, this is where this came from. This came from Ohio, and it's from uh, Roy Miller's mine. I didn't get it from Roy Miller. I got it from another person who gets it from Roy Miller, and it's his property basically sits you know, abutting a historically protected site so he's lucky enough to have a vein of this running through his land and I was lucky enough to be able to acquire some of it um, this is the the paler kind of pink and white it comes in a variety of different colors some of its dark some of it has what they call lightning bolts uh, the interesting thing about Flint Ridge is that um, it's even when you are lucky enough to have some it, it does oftentimes have inclusions, um, I, I guess if I'm using that word correctly, that a lot of times it has quartz veins running through it, which can give you some problems. And I, at first I looked at this and I thought it was pretty clean, but if you look closely here, you can see right here, right there, there's some quartz. I hope you can see that. There's a quartz vein. And if you look on the face of the stone, you'll see a little bit. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up or not, but basically it just, it just looks like something shiny in there. And when you look at the stone and you see that, you just have to work around it. This is an incredibly square, almost perfectly square piece of stone. Not something I'm used to working with. I'm not sure if we'll get a, a biface out of this or maybe just some really good chunks uh, or really good flakes rather. I can see a lot of step fractures in here, <clears throat> so I'm not sure the quality of the stone, but we're going to find out. I'm going to start off using my copper lead heads. They're just copper caps, the billets that I always use in all my videos. They're copper caps filled with lead. And I may even try, um, I picked up some solid copper billets. They're a little bit tricky to use, but I may try one. So right now I'm just going to grind off the edges, get rid of all the weak points because that's what's going to give me the most problem. Flint Ridge is not as user friendly as the Novaculite or you know, definitely not as much as the Dacite or Obsidian. But even the Novaculite in the Georgetown is a little bit easier to work with. But Flint Ridge is just so beautiful. So we're going to see what happens. So I think first, I'm going to take the thickest spot, which is right here, and try and drive a big flake off of there. I'm just going to try and thin this down. I'm going to bill it up to my largest billet, which I believe is an inch and a quarter. Might be higher. I don't even remember now. I'm going to come down. In fact, I'm not going to lead with my finger. I'm going to hold it like this so that I get more follow through. And we got a nice flake. Look at that. That's our flake. And even some of the thinner flakes uh, with Flint Ridge, I still save them because it's a stronger stone. You can get away with making a thinner point. Or you can make, you know, a, a, a necklace, arrowhead, whatever. You know, it's just it's, it's be such a beautiful stone. I hate to waste any of it. So now it made me another platform right next to it, because that's usually what happens. And I'm going to hit that. Now you can see there's some chatter right there. Hopefully you can see that, some chatter on the top of that, which is where my platform is. That could give me some problems, but because the platform is so steep and I'm taking such an aggressive um, flake, I don't think it's going to really be a big deal. We'll see if I'm right. I'm actually going to double up my pad here. Because my leg still kind of hurts from yesterday. Alright, let's take it see if we can bust through that chatter. I'm going to hit it a little bit high so I don't, I'm not as um, affected by that chatter. Oh yeah, nice. So, I wanted an aggressive flake, 
and that's what I got. Really, this is a beautiful flake here. I'm saving that for sure. A nice clean feather. I'm happy with that. I think now I'll take off this corner here. I probably won't get anything workable out of it, but I just want to try and keep everything uniform, the same shape. That's a good way to avoid end shock, is to just try and keep everything as flat as possible. I'm grinding really aggressively, too. If it doesn't want to be there, I want it to fall off. Hopefully I can get this thin enough to where we can zigzag it. I think that's what I'll do, because it was way too thick before. So I still have that big platform right here. I mean, I keep saying platform. It's not really a platform. It's just an angled edge. And I was lucky enough to where this squared edge here actually had a slope to it. So that certainly was helpful. Kind of acts as a platform. I mean, it is a platform because that's what I'm hitting off of, but not the kind of platform that we usually talk about. It's not taking much of a grind, but it's because it's that flat edge. So, what I want to do on this next flake is I want to take off this high point, this high ridge right here. I'm not even concerned if I get workable stone out of it, I just want to flatten it out. And then I'll probably come back on this side, take out that ridge. So again, I'm not going to guide it. I'm going to actually just keep my finger. When I put my finger on there, a lot of times it's it's uh, when I'm working the softer stone, it's because it helps me uh, aim, helps me hit my platform. It's kind of a bad habit to get into, to be honest with you. But you know, whatever, whatever works. You know, don't let anybody tell you how to map. So I want to support this real good. I don't want any end shock, especially since I'm hitting straight down. All right, I drove a flake, but it wasn't quite what I wanted. So I've got a little bit of a hinge here. I guess it's more of a step, a little step fracture right there. My flake terminated too short. Now I could try and take that platform again because I didn't really thin it down that much. But it's never a good idea to hit a flake into a short termination, a hinge or a step, because it will just stop wherever that short termination is. It's very unlikely, unless you really, really undercut it. Um, you can blow through a hinge, but it's, it's, it's not, not when it's this thick. It's not going to happen. At least not, you know, at least it's not something I can do. So I'm going to try and take the hinge off from the other end, which is what you always want to do with a hinge. Build myself a little platform here on the opposite side. My chickens are trying to get into my flint napping area. I think I'm going to build it down. Hmm. I think I'm bleeding. And this time I think I am going to direct it, because it's a, it's a smaller flake I'm going to take. Yeah. Alright, so I cleaned that hinge up. So you can see, no more hinge. I'm going to come back to this platform here. I think I'll grind it again first though. I think I'm going to stick with this one inch billet too, to be honest with you. It's been a while since I've napped Flint Ridge, so we'll see how it works. There we go. It's such a fun stone to nap too, because you really get to be aggressive with it. So, there's my platform, there's the flake. Relatively smooth, I didn't really get any steps or hinges or anything. We're starting to flatten this stone out too, I'm going to save this. This is a pretty thick piece, thick enough to make something out of. I always like to trim my flakes before I stash them away. For one thing, it saves space, and also, 
reduces the amount of dust that gets created by them rubbing against each other and breaking off all the pieces that you're never going to use anyway, so why bother even taking the time to, to save them? You know, if there's anybody out there that's starting to, to nap and interested in, you know, either supplies or, or flakes, I love percussion. I do a lot of percussion work, and I never get a chance to really use all of my flakes. So, either send me an email or post, an, even better, post in the comments. We can work something out. Trying to get this reduced enough to where I can start zigzagging it. I'm putting away the big guy, the big one and a half inch or one and a quarter, whatever it is. I'm gonna stick with my one inch billet. had a piece hit me right in the cheek. That's why you wear safety glasses. I don't care how good you are. That's enough about being the safety police. Nap how you want. Maybe I'll start selling eye patches on my YouTube page. Off a little hinge right here. That's all right, though. I'll clean it up from the other side. It's still pretty big at this point, but that just means that I, you know what? It's because I guided. I guided. I didn't, for whatever reason, when I change my grip, I get a much more, um, get much more follow through in my strikes. the corner off. Probably rushing. I'm just gonna start zigzagging this. It's always a little difficult when you start with a square stone. It's kind of amazing that this stuff actually spalls square. It must have something to do with the, uh, you know, the geological formation of the stone to make it want to always, you know, want to be square. Because a lot of it that you get is square. Let's prime this edge. So what I don't want to do here is I don't want to get a hinge on this side because it's a nice clean side. So I need to make sure that I'm either not hitting aggressively on the top so that the, it terminates or runs out of kinetic energy or, you know, so, so maybe lower platforms, thinner flakes and more of them instead of trying to be aggressive. Or, you know, well, I guess that's my only option. That's what I need to do. So, I have a tendency to want to really take off a big amount because it's so thick right there, but it's better to just take your time. There we go. That's a nice flake. So, here was my platform. There's my flake. Yeah, and CNC, um, by not trying to be as aggressive, I actually took off a bigger flake than what I anticipated. And this is a this is a nice flake. I'm gonna keep this for sure.
So that took a pretty good flake out of there. I've got a nice platform right here. There's a ridge that I can follow. Okay. The platform will be somewhere there. That ridge will be right here. See if I can get another another good flake like that. Before I do that though, I'm finish zigzag on this one side. Grind the heck out of it. All right. I hope I don't break this because I'm, I am going to have to hit it kind of aggressively. I wonder if I should just come back to that. Let me clean this rock up. Boy, I think a little bit. What I'm getting rid of here is just kind of like a little. It's a very thin end. It's not going to end up as part of the point anyway, so just get rid of it. I think I'm going to take this platform right here. Right here. I'm going to bust across there, thin that tip a little bit. It's easy to just want to take a platform, but if you have any doubts at all, think about it for a minute. So that flake dove a little deeper than I would have liked. But it's alright. Not done yet. Now it's time to take that flake. It's sharp though, I need to grind it down a little bit. So you can see right here, the platform is sort of undercut by this chatter. So I need to really give it a, a good hit to try and blast through that. Wouldn't recommend it, but I'm just going to try it. Oh, well, didn't, nothing happened, but I didn't like the sound or the feel of that. So I'm going to come back. You know what I'm going to do? We're going to. We're just going to chip this away from the back. I'm going to take this side here and keep working on this thick spot from another angle. That way at least it'll reduce it enough so where if I do have to take that weird platform, I'm not driving through so much mass. If that makes any sense. So I'll explain it again. So this is the big mass that we're trying to take off right here. You can see how thick it is on this side. I was trying to, to hit the platform or, you know, what could be a platform here to blast that off, but it's just a lot of mass. Um, and it could crack it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these platforms here on this side, which are going to chip away a little bit of that mass, not everything, but make it reduce enough so that if I do have to come from this end, it's not trying to cut through so much stone. That's my theory. Let's see if it works. We got a little off, not as much as we want to, but maybe I'll take this one next, and then I'll build a platform over here. This is not really anything there. Ooh, that sounds like a short termination. Well, it did. I got myself a little hinge, right, <laughs> a big hinge, 
right next to that quartz vein. But look how close it is to this other part that we want to take off anyway. So that actually did help us. And, I, and I'm going to try and take that now. See how we thinned out all this area here? This is all that's left of that big chunk that we had. Now it's going to be easier to take from this side. It's still a terrible, terrible platform though. I don't like that at all. I'm going to support this real well. I have to make sure I don't drive that flake into my finger, though. There we go. I didn't cut myself, and we took off a huge portion of that high spot. So now all we have left is this up here. So this did a lot of good work for us. I'm happy about that. I'm going to try and take off the rest of that little bulb right there. And we're starting to flatten this out. So from coming to almost a complete perfect cube to something flat, it's not easy to do. I'm not bragging or anything. I'm just saying I'm excited. I'm more excited if I don't break this. After I hit it a couple times, if it doesn't go, I don't I don't force it because something's not right. I'm gonna bill it down. Something a little bit smaller. Mostly just so that I can get a better aim. I'm gonna take a platform that's a little bit away. I wanna take this big piece out here, but I'm gonna take this over here first. Because I think if I take that out, it'll leave me a, a better platform. Sorry, you can't see this. If I take this out first. It'll give me a better opportunity to take out that fat part. So that's what I'm going to do. One more time. And I'm grinding. All right, so. Let's try something different. So I'm going to switch up to the other side. I'm going to leave this alone for now. It's not working for me, so I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to try and thin off this, this square edge here. I can't really zigzag it. Uh, maybe I can. Yeah, maybe I'll try, I'll try that. See if I can zigzag this without breaking it. I'm trying to make sure that my fingers are touching the front and the back of it. That way I don't get in shock. A little bit of support under where my flake is going to go. Not so much on my leg at this point, just kind of resting my hand on my leg. My finger is doing the support. What you want to be careful of there is that you don't drive a flake into your finger. I've done that about a hundred times. So our shape isn't that great, but we're starting to get where we need to be. Go back to that fat side, that trouble area. I'm going to try and start doing some zigzagging. If nothing else, just to give myself a better platform. Alright, so I'm thinning out the top side of that where the platform would be in hopes that I can get a good flake to travel, but I'm kind of giving myself some hinges and some chatter up here. So, but I'm trying to reduce this here. All right, look at it. Finally, we have a decent platform to reduce that mass right there. Make it even better though. So I had to really work into that. 
you know, and I, and I paid for it because, you know, some of my edges aren't super beautiful. Ooh, they're really sharp, though. i got to grind those out. But uh, that's okay. Well, we're not done yet. And that right there is the platform that we wanted. Right there. So, for being such a difficult rock, for me anyway, being perfectly, pretty much square, I'm happy with the way this stone naps. We haven't hit any quartz veins. Although there's one right where I need to take that flake off. You can see it. You can see it running straight up here. But it doesn't look bad. I'll put it up there again so you can see it a little closer. There we go. We cleaned off that hinge for the most part. Clean it off enough to where the rest of our flakes will take the remaining of that hinge out. So now that we have that problem addressed, I'm going to start going right to shaping because we're already starting to get kind of a weird looking freeform here. trash on that one side. I have a thick part down here by the base that needs to be addressed. See how it's thicker during the down there by the base. So I'm gonna build myself a platform right here. Right by that evil quartz vein. So I've got a couple platforms I can take, but I'm going to take this one right here on the end. I'm going to take it at a little bit of an angle and try and get off as much of that thick part as I can. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit off. I'm just trying to be, I'm a little bit extra cautious because of that quartz vein. Trying to remember to support the tip, the side, as much of that stone as I can hold. None of it's going to go on the pad. <coughs> my hand, will, my fingers will go on the pad, but I'd rather stick myself with a flake than break this in half right now. All right. Oh yeah, nice one right here too. I don't know if that platform's been here the whole time or if I missed it or if it just occurred, but right there. A little bit of that thick spot. It's not super thick over there, but thick enough to where I want to take it out. Good. For some more thick spots. Always thin from the ends first, and then the middle. If you have a thick middle and thin ends, as weird as that sounds, you think you would get end shock, but um, that's way better than having thick ends and a thin middle. Obviously, because you know the vibration of each hit is going to make it snap in the middle. Some minor touch up that I'm doing now. The 
This might end up being a little knife. It's the shape it seems to want to have. I, don't, I try not to force a point. I mean, obviously, I, I go into it with a particular objective. I want to meet that objective, but like in this case, I can spend the time to shape this back into an arrow point if I want. I mean, it's not it's not hard or impossible, but, but if you micro flake it, like look at that, that uh, should have showed you, but that was actually sticking out of my finger, a little tiny flake. Make sure I don't track this in the house. I'll be in trouble forever. All right, so I think what we're, I think we're going to call it quits here, just because we've got our preform, and uh, I want to get on to some other percussion projects. But we'll finish this up in another video. But this is the preform that we made. So that's what it looks like on that side. That's what it looks like on that side. And all we'll do is we'll just shape that up a little bit, thin it up. Still needs a little bit of thinning down here. A little bit. There's more percussion work to be done. But, um, you know, I just wanted to show you what it's like to flint nap flint ridge and also um, awkwardly square pieces of stone and show that they can still be turned into something nice. Uh, so, appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, all that stuff. And if there's any questions that you have or any comments, please do so. And until next time, this is Paleo Greenbird signing out. Please have a wonderful day.